I'm Dennis Anderson along with Julie Zenner and here's what's coming up on a special edition of Almanac North. We're in the heart of downtown Duluth at the WDSE WRPT Media Lounge where the Catalyst Content Festival is going on all around us. We'll find out why this event could open up some big opportunities for the region. We'll talk about the immediate impact the influx of visitors from around the country is having on the Twin Ports. And we'll pull back the curtain to show you what it takes to put on a major festival for the first time in a new city. It's all coming up next on this special edition of Almanac North. Hello and welcome to Almanac North. Thank you very much for watching. And as you can see from our surroundings, we are not in the studio this week. The fact is we've taken the show on location at the Catalyst VIP Media Lounge in downtown Duluth. And Julie, it's exciting to actually be in the heart of all the action down here. It really is exciting to be here in the heart of it. You know, walking in the room today, there were all sorts of people who were gathered here kind of talking and making connections. You could just feel the energy and the creativity in the room. It's pretty exciting. It can be a fun show. And we should mention, too, that our show was recorded on Thursday this week. And now here's Julie with our first guests. All right. Thanks, Denny. Bringing the Catalyst Content Festival to Duluth represents a unique opportunity for Northeastern Minnesota. It's a chance for writers and producers who have an idea for a TV or web series to mingle with the talent agents and executives who can make their dreams come true. And it could bring these creators and production crews back to Minnesota to shoot their series. That could prove to be an economic boon for the region. Representative Dave Lislagard from Aurora is working to make that happen. He's vice chair of the House Tax Committee. And Jeff Anderson is a consultant for the Catalyst Content Festival. And thanks to both of you for joining us today during a really exciting time for Duluth and for the region. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Appreciate it. Representative Liz, 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 Liz Ligard, there we go. I can, easy for me to say. <laughs> um, you have some experience in the film industry as a an actor in North Country. Talk about that. Well, uh, thank you, Julie, and thank you for having us. Uh, but uh, back then, in 2001, after I lost my job at LTV, I went back to college, and uh, part of um, uh, going to school, you have to take electives, and one of them, I took a, a theater class, and uh, my professor asked me if I would do a private screening for North Country uh -huh. about mining. And uh, originally I said no, but uh, being from the range, um, I can add quick, and uh, knowing that the professor would probably like it, so I did it. And then I got a call back, and, um, and then I was cast in North Country. And what it did is it, it opened up uh, uh, my understanding and my eyes to see really what film industry brings uh, to a region. And uh, it came at a time where the mining industry was down, and uh, the influx of jobs and uh, how it stimulated sure. our local businesses was incredible. And Jeff, you've been working to bring tax incentives to the movie industry filming here in Minnesota. How important is that? it's very important and right now as related to the festival we have all of these people who make decisions on where to film productions television and film around the country and they look at uh, the types of locations you can shoot at they look at your workforce they look at all of these factors but at the end of the day they have to make the numbers work and so they look for states that have competitive incentives for filming and unfortunately Minnesota's have lagged behind but we're working um, with a number of stakeholders to try and change that and make us more competitive. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there's an appetite in St. Paul to add some incentives for filmmaking? You know, I think that there's a lack of understanding of really what the industry is. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we need to see it, feel it, and touch it to be able to understand it and to explain and show the added benefits um, to the industry. There are uh, so many jobs that, that people don't see. When they watch TV, they, they only see the, the actors. But it's the vast amount of jobs that are behind the cameras that are so essential to this industry. Dave, you've been to Hollywood a couple of times. What did you learn there about the movie industry? Well, um, first of all, Hollywood is very unique. Uh, I would say that um, there are a lot of jobs. I would think that it's extremely competitive. And I would think it's a tough market to get into, into Hollywood. 
Um, I, I would think that that's what this catalyst is going to bring. It's going to bring opportunity for those who may not have that opportunity to be able to be exposed and connect with others in the industry. Mm -hmm. What are some of the benefits to taking those conversations out of, out of Hollywood, out of New York, and bringing them to kind of a, a quiet place like Duluth? Well, we live in the golden age of television. We truly do. If you look through Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and all of this content that's out there, there are more people creating and more people looking for not only talent but locations uh, to film that. And so we have an opportunity to have those conversations with people while they're on the ground yeah. here in Duluth and say northeastern Minnesota from a lake that looks like an ocean to wonderful locations on the Iron Range and on the North Shore, we have uh, an incredible place that's open for business. What you're really saying, at least I'm hearing you saying this, the, the day of the big screen movie theater only is long gone. There are so many other venues now. Absolutely, and you can look to states like Georgia. Georgia did $9 billion in film and television production last year. That's more than in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Beyond um, trying to get some more financial and tax incentives, are there things that our region can do to really position itself so that those who are making the decisions in the filmmaking industry take a, a look or a second look at us? You have to get in front of them. Right, so connect the dots to connect the people to tell the story to hopefully influence outcomes for our region and it starts by going to them and then getting them to come um, to us and to have them conversations what we're willing and able to do. And that's what's really important about creating the right incentive that is going to meet the needs of everyone moving forward. Mm -hmm. I suspect there are a lot of our viewers who have no idea what the catalyst is. What is this weekend all about? So it's independent creators who are coming together to show uh, what they've created to people who can then buy or take those productions to the uh, to television screens. And so you have uh, people who are very young, who have created something uh, new and fresh. You have people who have won Emmy Awards who are here with their new creations. So people are constantly creating and shopping those, uh, those shows. So what will attendees see if they should come? So we have screenings in the various theaters in downtown Duluth. That's what, one of the reasons that Catalyst uh, picked Duluth is because within a three block radius we have uh, four or five theaters. So people are watching these uh, independent productions and you as a creator or as someone who lives in Duluth could be sitting next to someone from Amazon or Netflix. Mm -hmm. What do you, oh, you look well, like you were going to say something? I would just say that Catalyst is bringing an opportunity to the state of Minnesota. It's, it's putting us on the stage, bringing people here for the next five years, which is extremely important as we're trying to set up this foundation for this industry, whether it's incentives or whether it's exposure to our state and our region. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing and hearing so far? You know, we're taping this on Thursday, um, so it's been going on for, for a day already. What, are, what do you feel people's first impressions are of the, of the community and of the festival? I've spoken to many of the people who are on the ground here, and keep in mind we have over a thousand people who are at the festival. Um, Ninety percent of those people, if not more, are from outside of this area, outside of Minnesota. We have people from Iran, Indonesia, really? uh, who have traveled here. And I have heard time and time again that their first impression is the people here are so friendly. And so we have some great ambassadors who are out there welcoming folks to uh, the area. What can Duluth specifically offer movie makers that other states maybe can't? We have beauty for one thing. Beauty, I would absolutely, beauty the people. and the people, the <laughs> workforce as well. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, we have an international airport. We have access to the, the Twin Cities metro area. We have the Iron yeah. Range. We have airport. so many places that people can shoot and, and do productions. Um, it, it's really a unique place. And, you know, we have filmmakers and television, uh, uh, people who are producing television on both of the coasts. We have them in Georgia. We need a, a, a place in the north, and this can be that place. Mm -hmm. The biggest message is that Minnesota is open for business. Now, the region has had filmmaking on its radar for a long time. The Upper Minnesota Film Office has been around since the mid-90s. What has, has that uh, organization and its overtures to the industry done to make this region more competitive and to even bring this festival here? Well, the office and uh, Ricky McManus in particular have done uh, great work uh, with uh, laying sort of the groundwork we're building upon uh, and, and pushing for new incentives and, and other things. Um, Ricky and a team from Catalyst led an effort to create a production guide 
for northeastern Minnesota. We had so many communities and the counties and tourism bureaus and cities participate in this and every person who's here from out of town has this booklet in their bag that they're receiving that shows places to shoot the different infrastructure we have for productions. They have that and that's a, a prime way for us to say we're open for business. We're ready for you. Come yeah. create here. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much you. for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. Have fun at the festival and good luck as you pursue some incentives. For the Dave, industry. Jeff, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. and business officials have literally rolled out the red carpet this week to show off Duluth during the Catalyst Content Festival. They're making the best of things even as Superior Street reconstruction continues in the midst of the festival. Downtown Duluth is literally buzzing with activity and excitement. And that makes Anna Tansky happy. She's the president and CEO of Visit Duluth. And Christy Stokes is the president of the Greater Downtown Council. Thanks to both of you for being here. And Anna, how does this event compare with maybe other events that have taken place in downtown Duluth? Well, that's a great question because we're so fortunate that this is an incredible opportunity and it's so unique in what it brings to us. So Duluth has an abundance of special events and activities that take place, but this is for us the opportunity to showcase what we have here in a way that we've never been able to do before. Mm -hmm. Christy, the planning for this has been going on for months and months. Uh, what are your first impressions as the festival gets underway? Well, I think you had mentioned we have Superior Street reconstruction going on. So, <laughs> so that was this. one of the things that we had to really work through and, and figure out yeah. how do we have a little fun with this. Um, we've added some signs out there that even say, hey, Catalyst, we have a construction set ready <laughs> for you. So we want to make sure that they realize this is all signs of progress for our community. And we're growing and we're trying to prepare for this. But um, just initial reaction to the the festival itself is it's it's fun to see the excitement um, i just sat in on one of the documentaries or two of them and it was just really fun to be able to watch that and be able to see some of the excitement that's going on here what are your agencies doing to support the festival well we've had a lot of synergy between many partners here in duluth which is what has also been so impressive to the organizers because they don't usually see this type of collaboration but Visit Duluth was involved in the very early stages along with the Upper Minnesota Film Office in the very first introduction of our community, doing site inspections, bringing the organizers here to really see firsthand that everything they were hearing was even better when they saw it in person. And I think it's really about providing those connections. Um, I think back uh, about a month ago, I, we were at an event and Philip was at the event with us, the executive director of Catalyst, and he needed to connect with two property owners and it just so happened the event that I was hosting had those two property owners there and we were able to do this and he said boy this has been <laughs> beneficial so it's just things like that where we could provide those connections and make sure things are happening also to make our businesses aware you know for them to be able to provide some of that support in this community um, and really roll out the red carpet mm -hmm. and you represent the downtown waterfront business community uh, what are the benefits to having this festival come to this area? I think it's to put the spotlight on our community as a whole, but also everything that we have in our downtown. When we talk about all of the synergy here, when we talk about having all of these theaters within just walking distance, um, it's really showcasing what our community has to offer. So it's not just thinking about the festival, it's what's beyond the festival. When we look at perhaps shooting some of those episodes and programs. Mm -hmm. And are people spending money in town? 
We sure hope so. <laughs> Every indication is yes. yes. Every and, indication and is Anna, yes. the hotel industry has really yes. taken off in this city. What does that mean for a festival this size? You know, we're very fortunate to have the capacity to host this event as it exists today, which is the largest that they've seen. They came here to have the opportunity to grow. Sure. And we have, of course, tremendous capacity for years to come to let them continue to see that type of growth because we have a variety of properties. We have um, every type of lodging option that their attendees are seeking because it's very diverse and we're very fortunate yeah. to have that. Mm -hmm. Have locals had an opportunity to get involved as, as volunteers or helping to make this all come together behind the scenes? Absolutely. There's a tremendous volunteer base that was required. As you can imagine, uh -huh. with so many venues um, mm -hmm. taking place, we need those bodies in place to serve as ambassadors. So we have volunteers starting at the airport with, to be the gateway and welcome to our community, as well as all the different venues and behind the scenes. There's been a tremendous amount of support from within the community. And I think the community is still learning what this is. Yeah. So for them to see what's actually happening or for them to come down to one of the events, now it's becoming reality. Now they're like, oh, that's what this is about. So how long have you been working in preparation of this festival. I mean, this is a long time in planning. It's actually come together very quickly. We um, had about 13 months from start to finish, which That's is quick. not a great <laughs> time, um, but it's really come together in the last four or five months. And that's when all of the pieces fell into place as far as really getting community to come together and again, creating the awareness, creating the broader understanding. And sure. we feel like this is just the beginning. There's so much momentum behind this. And we're also um, really going to be assisting and moving forward with the legislature this year because it's going to take a lot of hands to get that done. And during all of this planning, we didn't know for sure how far along would we be in our Superior Street reconstruction. So we're having to make these plans, point, yeah. not knowing are we going to be up to grade <laughs> on the street? What are we going to have out there? So it's great that the crews were able to be were able to work with yeah. us as they did. Mm -hmm. And in terms of attendance, are the, the powerhouses in the industry, did they show up? <laughs> they are here, and we are so grateful to have this opportunity to conduct one big site inspection, not just for Duluth, but for our region. And I think it's really important, as much as I'd love to just focus on Duluth, this is really an opportunity for all of northeastern Minnesota into northwestern Wisconsin, you know, um, this there aren't going to be boundaries. When we start looking at opportunities for series to be possibly produced here from start to finish, and it really becomes a workforce development conversation, not just about you know, the tourism side of things, because that's just the introduction to this whole process. And as we see people come here and see the surprise on their face, there's nothing more rewarding than to exceed someone's expectations. And that's really where these conversations are starting, because this is just the introduction of what really lies ahead. Yeah. You know, and, and Jeff and David mentioned it's about the people. And so that truly is when you think about what a strong workforce we have here. Um, I think they're really yeah. going to be amazed. Mm -hmm. What about opportunities for local filmmakers? Are, are they lining up trying to get in front of the, the folks that can make some decisions? Yeah, this, <laughs> this is their chance. You know, this is, this is that networking opportunity that they have to be able to showcase that. And to see um, you know, all of those individuals come together in one uh, location, um, even if it's just at after hours and not even realize who they are and mm -hmm. be able to make those connections yeah. are real important. I mm -hmm. wish we had more time to chat. There's a lot of other questions we had, <laughs> but we have to say goodbye. Thank you very much, Anna Thank and you. Christy. Thank, Thank you, you so kindly. Thank you. Thank you.
WDSE has been following the Catalyst Festival from the time it was first announced. Our cameras have been there for the initial introductions to region-wide preparations. And we're following things this week right up through the red carpet events on Sunday. Our production team of Steve Ash and Karen Sunderman have gone behind the scenes and are working on a documentary that will air in 2020. Here's a peek of what they have learned so far. Fasten your seatbelts. This could be big. Hey, Tom, it's Philip with Catalyst Content Festival up in Duluth. I was just calling to say congratulations about Work Friends being selected to screen at the festival this year. I was just calling to say congratulations about the system being accepted to screen at the festival. Calling about Limbo to say congratulations on it being selected to screen this year. Oh man, thank you so much, that is awesome! You are welcome, it's a great oh, series. Dude, I'm pumped! I've never had to have one conversation in Duluth explaining why the arts are important. Because here it's just a given. You know, there's snow, there's Lake Superior, and there's the arts. Like, it's just part of life. Oh, wow. It's good to see You're you. We do get the arts. This is what we do. You know, in Duluth, we have this world-class arts scene. This is what we do in our sleep. Welcome 1,500 people who have a shared series of interests in wanting to make sure that we are providing the venues and the theme to help make that work. I think the North Shore Theater is here to help put Duluth on the map of a town to visit with things to do. Blenching is no stranger to big movies or fun, creative filmmaking. We get it, we just understand the arts and have crazy fun ideas like putting a band out on a 100 foot pier that extends into Lake Superior, the greatest lake in the world. Get up, out of your seat and move yourself around. Get ready to get in, get on, get up and get down. We bring you now another thrilling tale of high adventure in the wild west filled with love, betrayal, and coconut horses. We got a phone call from Philip and was like, yep, yeah, you've, been, you've been selected. So that, that was fun. That was a fun day. You know what I mean. No, no, uh, none of us have any idea what you mean. I'm just proud of what we do, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's cool to see how many people are like, God, this is, this is amazing, and either making work for it or supporting it. You? I'm good at 9.30 in the morning. I really Don't consider it a win already because yeah. it got us to create the best thing that we could, whether it gets into the festival or not. It just really feels like a, like a win-win. Looking for the best buskers in America. It would be great to sell these shows, right? It would be great to roll out two seasons of American Buskers and travel around the country and then maybe take it worldwide, which is sort of one of the goals. But I think at the end of the day, there's a validation by being in Catalyst that says your show is worthy of being shown to a greater audience. Catalyst is huge because it gives an opportunity for anybody who's got a story and some you know, skill in storytelling to get in front of people that have the ability to make it real. If over that whole uh, couple days of Catalyst, our thing doesn't get uh, picked to pitch, but I'm sitting next to someone who's uh, interested in animation and we talk about it and they say, next time you're in LA, come talk to us, that's succeeding. Catalyst is the largest independent television festival in the world that's coming to our neck of the woods. And what a blessing that is for us. What I do with the Upper Minnesota Film Office is economic development. I like being the connector. One tour I did, filmmaker out in New York, I started with some of the pretty, and it's when it went to the gritty. He said, okay, okay, I thought I was gonna be bored. I am now so not bored. I love the grit of what you have. 
Oh my gosh, what can I do? Ask yourself that. What I'm hoping is that they come in and they say, I have these great women characters. They're, they're, they range from ages 20 to 75. I want to be involved with the films. I want to be involved with the costuming. First of all, let's hope the road construction is done by October. <laughs> um, the construction, it'll be done, right? Yes, let's, let's strive for that. And then when you're fixing pipe from 1880, there are some things you may or may not be able to control. Catalyst is going to be really happy with choosing Duluth as their location. The trailer you just watched was shared with festival attendees and the mayor's welcome reception on Thursday night. You don't have to be near a TV to keep us to keep up on our latest programs and topics. Just follow Almanac North on our social media channels. You'll find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And for updates about your favorite PBS programs, visit the WDSC website, where you can also find news about the station and learn about our upcoming public events. And Julie, it was a lot of fun to take the show out of the studio on the road. We'll have to do this again sometime. Lots of work on, on behalf of the crew, but it was really fun to be here. Yeah, that's and, uh, for sure. I do hope that we get a chance to do it again. Would be nice, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our guests, too, and to the WDSC WRPT crew for making all this happen. And so with Julie Zenner, I'm Dennis Anderson. Thanks for watching Almanac North. Good night, everybody, and be kind.